Welcome to Comfort Hacker number two. I'm your host, Echo Fan Grey Wolf, and this is my third attempt at this. So, as I said before, I had to flip out and delete the last two videos. One, I don't like drama. Two, I send warnings, not invitations. And three, I did a cowardly thing. I let some dude run me out of a group, of a Facebook group. It's called Hot Fire Filipina Hearts Friends Smiley Face Heart Heart Heart. All right, that guy also watches my YouTube channels. So I'm going to leave your name out out of fucking respect because you don't know half the shit in my life that I've been through at 49 years old. But we're going to pick it up, you know, because um, I ain't bring that drama to fucking Facebook because that's not how I roll. But I am going to talk about that shit because, you know, one, when you don't know somebody's life situation, you cannot just go firing off at the mouth and calling them what he basically said. Now, y'all can call me a coward after this, and this is great, because what can I really do? What, literally, what can I do? Because I can't reach through the phone and choke the shit out of somebody. That's not an option. I do not know where the persons live, and I'm not going to go get shot over words on a motherfucking computer. Because, you know, my martial arts is a joke. We're going to get there now. Hopefully, I won't have to stop recording and do this shit again. So if you're watching, fella, and I know you probably are since you said my martial arts is a joke as said in set text, then we're going to get there. All right, so let's go. Um, I was a part-timer in the group in which I mentioned. So he came at me with, bro, it sounds like you've been um, three years and you're still in college. And what are you studying? I say police crimes and criminal justice. And it's been about five years, I think. It might have been longer than that, to be honest, because I'm not really sure. I know I was supposed to graduate a couple of months back or a year or so back, but they added more classes to my program, so I had to stay. And FYI, for your last text, um, the military was supposed to help me pay for college because unlike you, I'm a vet. Actually, I don't know if you're a vet, so I may have misspoke. But I am a veteran of the United States Army Guard, Army National Guard. The military didn't pay for shit. Thank God for Pell Grants that I didn't have to pay back, so I am debt-free. I didn't qualify for any of the special subsidies or any of that, but I've been using Pell Grants for however long I've been in school. And the Pell Grants work like this. Whatever I don't use on the Pell Grant goes back into my pocket. So this semester, the Pell Grant only paid for my class. I just paid the school 80 bucks for my books, the receipts in this cabinet behind me. So that covers that shit. And as far as everything else, I should not be getting any more grants for school because this should be my last class. Got that out the way? Good. Now you got enough information that you can choke on. So now we're going to go back. Sales like, you're scared to enter the real world. So college isn't the real world to you. But the fact that I have to go and clean up behind handicapped people as my job of current, which is an under-the-table job. So the Army pays me 300 bucks a month. I have to go scrub toilets, but I'm not working in the real world. I just want to point y'all out that out that I do have a job. I go scrub toilets, you know, and I clean up. But again, for him, I'm not working in the real world. Just because I'm not as successful as this person, I guess he decided I'm going to fuck with you today. So then somebody else asked me a question. And I said, I'm 49 years old trying to get this degree. And um, apparently my age doesn't mean nothing to this young person because my martial arts is a joke. Um, then, um, I want to leave the real world. Cause I, you know, at this time I thought this person was still kind of my friend. So apparently he's not my friend. I'm a fucking joke to him. So my response was, I like to, to, um, I would kill to be in the Marvel universe. Like I'm an actor. So what actor would not drop everything to jump into the Marvel universe? And then I said, I heard the 616, I mean the 689, the 6, ah. Spider-Man 2099's world, the 928 needs a Spider-Man. It's written right there. All right. So then he goes, like I said, you're scared of the real world and you want to live in a fictional. All right, who doesn't want to live in a fictional world? The real world fucking sucks. Look at how the political politicians are fucking us all over left and right, regardless of if it's Trump or if it's Biden. So anyway... You scared to live life and experience real life scenarios. That's why you stay in college for as long as because your comfort zone to you. First off, 
college is not comfortable when you are 49 years old and everybody around you is young enough to be your fucking child. But of course, this motherfucker didn't take that into consideration. Yes, I know you're watching, which is why respectfully I left your fucking name off. I know your name. I'm not going to do you like that because unlike you, I actually have some respect for people and for the shit that they've been through. I don't know what you've been through, but now I no longer give a fuck. You know, because you, you know, you made me cowardly leave the fucking group so that there wouldn't be any fucking drama. Alright, so then we go on to, I seen your martial arts. It's a joke. Now, this is the part where I get a little bit personal with myself here. Um, You know I had a hip replacement at the age of 42. So if it's a joke to you, but it's all I've got. But I'm not going to get mad at you and anyone who thinks it's a joke. And I'm not. You think you're the only one that thinks my martial arts is a joke. Funny thing, though. Let me finish this first. So here's where I get cowardly. I'm sorry for my martial arts not being as good in my late 40s versus me at my 20s. But to each their own. And you have a great night. Please be sure to go laugh at my stuff because even negative attention helps me out. Alright? So then he goes back with, you can't hide in college your whole life. You need to grow up and enter the real world. I'm curious to who supports your college finances. Well, I like my parents, motherfucker. So, I'm upset. I get mad. I get cowardly. And I say, so clearly I have landed on your, your hate. Hate James Radar. So I'm going to bail until you get a new target. So yeah, I cowardly kicked out the group. Um, I'm not going to reveal this dude's name. It ain't worth my time. But now that I got all that out the way, first and foremost, you bionic little shit. It is real brave for people on the internet to say shit to other people. It is real brave for people to come to my YouTube channel and say shit. Now, as of Kung Fu Havoc number one, when I was younger and stupider and immature and replied to stupid comments, because those were the only comments I'm getting, I've grown up a lot. At 49, let me, let me drop some bombshells on you since you're watching and since my Kung Fu is a joke. You don't like me, you don't have to come to my YouTube channel. You don't think that I am a grown ass man, you don't have to come to my YouTube channel. There is no point in hell of why I need to explain myself to another grown-ass man that's not writing my fucking paycheck. Now, if you were like Vince McMahon and you decided, hey, we're going to give you a job in WWE Pictures, I will explain myself to Vince McMahon in a New York minute because I want that fucking job. If you were Kevin Feige, who had the opportunity to help me play Marvel's Spider-Man 2099 which technically belongs to Sony, if you were Kevin Feige, who decided, hey, we want you to play Wyatt Wingfoot in the next season of She-Hulk, providing that she got one. If you were Kevin Feige and you wanted me to play Warpath, Thunderbird, because the X-Men are coming into the Marvel Universe, if you wanted me to um, play Forge, that's three X-Men down. If you wanted me to play a male version of Danielle Moonstar from a different universe or a different timeline where she's a he, I'll play that. Hell, if you really want me to play Danielle Moonstar, make me look like a chick, put me in a bra and some panties, I'll do the shit because I'm an actor and that's what we fucking do. But of course, if you've been coming to my channel, you would know that I'm a martial artist first and an actor second because I've been fighting in the streets since I was fucking six years old. But somehow or another to you, my martial arts is a fucking joke. Cool. I ain't mad at you. Because here's that thing about my martial arts being a joke. If you do anything stupid, and you decide to come to my house in Charlottesville, Virginia, and you happen to find me, and you decide, hey, I'm going to see if this motherfucker can do his shit or not, because he's a fucking joke. As I tell everybody, I send warnings, not invitations, and then you cowardly got me out of the group. I, I took the bitch way out without 
question without doubt. I'm the coward. I, I left the group because I didn't want to bring drama to the group because that's not what I'm about. Now, fisticuffs, that's a whole nother ball game. Because I'm going to tell you, as I've told everybody else, if you fly across country, or if you come across town to start a fight with someone who you think is a fucking joke, you will not be going home. It is not going to work the way you think, just like everybody else. Oh, my bad. He might actually bring a gun and shoot me because that's what fucking cowards do. Just like all the cowards on the internet that travel all the way across town and across country to decide, hey, I'm going to see if this motherfucker's about it. Okay, so what happens when you come across that motherfucker that's a fucking about it, and then you can't go home in any phase, shape, or form outside of a red and blue four-wheeling box? I mean, the ambulance, not the hearse. I ain't about killing nobody if I can help it. But, again, my kung fu is a joke. That was straight from your mouth, not mine. Most of the people that I have fought have never come back for another round. All right? Even people that I have lost sparring matches to have never come back for another round. Ask that little asshole from New York that talked all that shit at my cousin's funeral and had me sitting outside for seven fucking hours waiting to fight this motherfucker. Oh, yeah, he went on to become ISK champion. But he never came back to fight me after talking all that shit about how him and my cousins was best friends. Yet, when my cousin was killed, I was at work at Burger King. But everybody who is in my cousin's clique was always pointing guns at me. Guns, real live guns with ammunition telling me how they're going to shoot me. That same cousin pulled a 44 Magnum on me and a 357 Magnum the week before. And my dumb ass, because I don't fear death, it's gonna happen. I literally walked up to the barrel. Shoot me, motherfucker, because it's the only way you can beat me. Both times he stood down. My life didn't mean shit to me then. My death won't mean shit to anybody now. So... I'm not afraid to die. I just know that it's going to take a gun to fucking do it. And most cowards, people who think they can fight but carry a handgun, you ain't about no fight. You might shoot a motherfucker, but you ain't about no goddamn fight. Because if you got to walk around with a fucking handgun, you, you really not about a fucking bunch of fighting. Period. Not saying you can't fight. Just saying you're going to take the bitch way out and shoot a motherfucker instead of square up. Because you know if you lose that fight, you're not going to be able to live down with it. Well... I lost a lot of fights growing up with my big sister because Kung Fu ain't got shit on the windmill. But when fights got serious and I got to fucking fully cut loose, I didn't lose none of those fights. I've never lost a real fight. I've lost sparring matches all the motherfucking time. And I have outwardly admitted that more than just this video. But everybody I fought when I was under the name of James Williams Jr. and under the name of Jonah, ain't none of them motherfuckers done showed back up at my fucking doorstep saying, yeah, I want revenge. No, none of them have done that. But because I have to make this video, because to you, my kung fu is a joke. Let me explain something to you. I'm the second of seven motherfucking children. I've been busting my ass in your fucking real world probably before you were born. Because I'm 49 years old. And unlike you, I have siblings who can't make adult goddamn decisions that don't bleed into my life. Which is why I'm 49 and fucking homeless. Which is why I have to go to college to find a fucking decent job instead of chasing my dream as an actor. Because I'm 49. And I had a close call, but Millennium Studios here in Virginia, they didn't make kung fu movies yet. They released The Expendables and they wouldn't give me a motherfucking job. They wouldn't let me work there as a janitor. They wouldn't let me work there as a fucking damn chef. They wouldn't let me work there as a goddamn groundsman. So don't sit here and tell me... I have not lived in the real world. I've been fired from many of real world jobs. I've been fired as a security guard because I wouldn't get certified because people made us watch these videos and then they told us if you are from Richmond Security, hi you motherfuckers, that if I put my hands on anybody on my job, I could be fired. And it was four twenty five an hour and there was no gun. I did not have a gun. But yet they told me that if I'm in uniform and someone robs a 7-Eleven and I don't have a gun, I'm supposed to stand up and take a bullet for a place that doesn't pay me. Yet they're only paying me for 25 an hour. But I'm sure you knew that because my kung fu is a joke and you've been watching all my motherfucking videos knowing how bad my fucking life actually is. But no, you decided to start fucking with me on Facebook. So I respectfully left your fucking name off that shit because you're a douchebag full of dick tips just like me. The difference is I know how to fucking behave. 
If someone tells me they have a fucking problem, I don't add to their problem by insulting them and telling them that they are afraid to live in the fucking real world. Well, motherfucker, I've been living in the real world for 40 some odd plus goddamn years since my fucking third, fourth, and fifth sibling was born. And then their bad fucking procreation choices means, oh, they daddies did drugs. They daddies got arrested. They daddies got locked up. So me not being able to take... $11 an hour jobs way back in the 90s, $15 an hour jobs way back in the 90s before that was a thing because I had to get kids that were not mine off the motherfucking bus. I had to do things that adults have to do because other adults made stupid decisions. So me going after my hopes, dreams, and the life I want had to take a backbeat until I'm almost 50 years old. But I'm sure you probably didn't know all that because you're not looking at my videos, you're just looking at certain things and saying, oh, your kung fu is a fucking joke. So while you're judging me and all that shit and my kung fu is a joke, understand something. You're young, and you may be very, very, very successful, but you ain't been through everybody on Earth's fucking shoes. I don't judge nobody because of the shit that I've been through. I don't judge nobody because of the shit I'm still going through because people in my family can't make motherfucking grown ass decisions. But I'm pretty sure you don't know that. So I can't get mad at you for saying my kung fu is a joke. But what I can do is offer you some solace. Nobody told you to come here. Nobody asked you to be here. I got 197 followers. They know that door is revolving. They come and they go. I do not get mad at them. Some of them live great and inspiring comments. Some don't leave any comments. 20% of my videos have never fucking been seen. But I post them because this is the closest thing I can get to acting without actually getting a fucking acting role and be fucking happy about doing it. Glad to be on this thing for 194 people. And if I'm blessed, which I am because I'm breathing, but if I'm blessed... One day, one day, I will have more people. But let, let me let me make sure I show you this because you know my kung fu is a joke. So, one, that's a scar. See that scar right there? That's for the people who think that my shit's a joke. So when you go back and you watch Kung Fu Havoc number one, you know this wasn't there. And I was in my 20s and 30s, and I could move like a cat. <clears throat> now I move like a very slow cat. But because I have a hip replacement, you know, I'm not going to use that as an excuse for why I still can fight. I probably just got to watch my hip. Now, in case you didn't catch the videos last night before all the this, uh, UFC came out in 1993. I was 19 years old. I tried to gain weight to get into the UFC. UFC didn't take my weight class until 2010. And I, at that time, was now at 140. But when I was trying to get into the UFC, I weighed between 115 and 125. Actually, I was 120 pounds exact now that I think about it. And I wrote them a letter after getting their address off of Jeeves. Yes, Jeeves was a thing. I think that's like what y'all got for Google now. But ask Jeeves. I don't know if he still exists, but ask Jeeves. I got the address. I sent them a note. They sent me a postcard back. Literally, get your weight up. So then I went on my I'm going to try to gain weight journey, which wound up into I'm going to set your asshole on fire because those shakes went right through me. Those pills went right through me. Everything that involved me trying to gain weight unnaturally caused me to have shits, like buckets and buckets of shits. So I decided right then and there, I'm going to be 120 for the rest of my life. Fuck it. The UFC never had a 120 class until I hit 37 years old. When I hit 37 years old, I gained 20 extra pounds because the army made sure that we ate. Even the shit we didn't like to eat. MREs, anything that was supposed to be fed, we got fed that shit. And MREs, only some of them are great. A lot of those motherfuckers taste like sandpaper, especially the fucking bread. But, hey, you gotta eat. Anyway, I got up to 140. That's my highest weight ever. And then I got depressed, and I went all the way back down to 115. 
But by then, I also had to have a hip replacement. I didn't choose to leave the Army. I just failed to qualify with my rifle. I got an honorable discharge because I failed to adapt. Now, had the Army let me use a bow and arrow, would have been a fucking problem. I am part native. Me and bow and arrows are pretty good friends. Might have had to take a whole lot more shots and more time because I probably would have needed more arrows. But I could have done that. And I wish I would have thought about that way back when I was in the Army, way back in 2010. I spent more years out of the Army than I did in the Army. And then we found out, oh, well, you couldn't lay on your fucking stomach in that prone position because your knee was fucked up. But then we found out it wasn't my knee, it was my hip, in case you didn't just see that fucking scar. So if you're watching, sir, I'm leaving your name out because I am a decent person, or at least I'm trying to be, minus the fact that all this video has a whole bunch of swearing. You, who was supposed to be my friend, clearly is a piece of filth. And I misjudged you by thinking that you were a decent person, an understanding person, who understands that everybody don't have a great life. But we all have the right to work towards it. I.e., I got 197 people in this YouTube group, and I pray that you're not one of them. And if you are, you can leave. The rest of y'all, y'all know the drill. The door is always open. The door is open whether you support Trump or support Biden. I chose Biden because he was the lesser of two evils and Trump was a straight fucking racist. Now as for the guy in which made me become a coward last night and leave the goddamn fucking Facebook group, hot Filipina something or another and a something or another. Did I mute this shit? Make sure this shit is muted. Yes, I'm watching wrestling. Anyway. To that guy, if you're watching, and I know you are, because my kung fu is a joke, and it's fine, you know, it's very fine that my kung fu is a joke, I can only tell you this, I pray, I pray, that there is never a day where you lose your health, where there is never a day where someone has to sit on a bed beside you. And say, you know, um, you um, got to get this, this, and this done. Because you won't walk again. And um, I pray that there's never a day where someone decides for you that you can never do the things you love ever the fuck again. Because here's how this shit worked. I'm 49. This happened at 42. So 43... 44, 45, no Kung Fu. Three years of the one thing that I love more than life itself taken from me. So I pick up a bow and arrow. I'm great with that bow and arrow. But if you ask me, would I rather have those three years of bow and arrow or would I rather do Kung Fu? I would fucking give up my soul to be able to do Kung Fu for the rest of my life. Because Kung Fu is the one thing in my life it has never let me down. It has never failed me. It has never, ever, ever let me down. When I got jumped on my job, when I was 16 or 17 years old, I beat up one white guy, embarrassed his ass, because the other guy was talking shit, and this big burly bastard decided to attack me from the back. And he had me pretty good. He ragdolled me a little bit, and then we flipped. And when we flipped, we landed on his back. I elbowed him in the sternum. And then I rolled off of him. He was fucking done. When he got up, I was going to end his shit. But his girlfriend got between my fist and his face. And I don't know how the fuck she did it because she was at least six steps away from him. But she saved his ass. Now, every other fight that I've been in, prior to that, I've never lost. Period. Now, the one incident where I made fun of that shit last night, I'll make fun of it again. When that guy jacked my eye and broke my glasses because I was driving a stolen car that my cousin stole, it was his. Now, other than that, I also was trapped in a seatbelt. So if you've been watching my videos, I've told this story about 90 fucking times. No, hasn't changed. Peter Pan skipped up to me and punched me in the motherfucking face. Twice. Broke my glasses, cut my eye. Which is why when I trained with my handcuffs, I mentioned that I got handcuffed that night. And that I threatened to use those handcuffs on his big brother. But to you... My Kung Fu is a joke. But do you actually watch my training videos when I actually tell people, 
do not attempt this shit because I've been doing this since I was 12. And But just because I feel tested it doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody. But no, my Kung Fu was a joke. Well, I'm pretty sure that if I teach the right people in your area the right shit and you happen to walk across one of those guys that I've trained how to break an elbow or a kneecap, you're going to understand that my Kung Fu is not a joke. You watch a lot of those Steven Seagal movies and he always breaks their arm right here. And that's fine and dandy. That's a good break. But here's a break that does mad fucking damage to a person for damn near 8 to 12 months of their life. When you break here, watch my hand. See how my hand twitches? See how this works? Look carefully. See how that's moving? If I break this, this doesn't work anymore. But my Kung Fu is a fucking joke. So like I said, I'm not going to get mad. It works the same on your kneecap. I'm not going to get mad because clearly my Kung Fu is a joke. But you clearly aren't watching or you aren't learning the shit that I am teaching people. But, you know, hey, my Kung Fu is a joke. So my cowardly ass left the Facebook group called... Hot, burning Filipina heart, friends, heart, smiley face. Now, I don't mean any disrespect to that group. However, to the bionic jackass who said that my kung fu is a joke, understand what I've been through while you're passing judgment. And since you're passing judgment, when you meet our Heavenly Father, make sure you point out that um, you turned me into a coward and I left because of drama that I did not want due to the fact that I'm not going to sit here and type this bullshit out day after day after day. And nobody wanted the video chat because there was a hot lady that wanted the video chat, but she clearly decided against it. So, hey, that's cool. So, to Tiger Lily, I'm sorry for um, leaving your group. Do not invite me back. But at that same time, I'm not the person to bring drama to your group. Because I'm not scared to live in the real world. I just don't want to live in the real world anymore. And besides, not all real world jobs put money on our tables. It does not put food in the bellies of your children. But if I and my acting career could just take off, everything that everybody says about me will change. And they be like, you know, we thought James was an asshole. We thought James sucked. Here's that thing. I've had enough bad experiences with a fucking actor or two to know that without you, the 197 of you that are actually here, without you, I'm nothing. Especially as an actor. I'm absolutely fucking nothing. Now, here's that thing. If you're an actor, if you're an actor like myself, do not forget your followers. Do not forget your fans. And do not be an asshole when you meet them. All right? Don't do that shit. Because here's that thing. That person that you treat as an asshole could be that career difference maker. So when people want your autograph, make time for it. I hope one day that people will want mine. I will make time for it. Because without them, I don't have fans. And an actor with no fans is not really an actor. They're going to be just like me. Poor starving, hungry, praying, busting their ass at every fucking level and still getting nowhere. Because I've been busting my ass for the last 24 fucking years under the name James Williams Jr. And I ain't got shit. But, as Echo Fang Grey Wolf and using my native heritage to help me get through and it is Happy Native American Month, I'm going to shock the world. Hopefully, after graduation, all my puzzle pieces will fall into place. Which, after graduation, I have to hunt for a real job in police science and criminal justice. And luckily for me, on November the 11th or the 17th, there's a um, thing happening at Piedmont where I can actually go and hunt for a fucking job. Let me see, I got it in my gallery while we're here because, you know, somebody thinks I'm afraid to go live in the real world. So, it is Career Services, Criminal Justice, Eat and Meat. Featured Albemarle, COPD, U.S. Um, Secret Service, UVAPD. Thursday, November the 17th at 12 p.m. at the North Mall. Well, I'm going to be late for that. 
I am going to be late for that because that happened during class time. Class ends at 1.45. Fucking A. I may have to talk to Miss Kemp's about that. Anyway, because class ends at like 1.45. Class starts between 11.30 and 12, but class ends then. So, I'm going to have to talk to my professor about that. But of course, if you're watching still after 29 minutes, you should know that, um, yeah, we go to college so that we can get jobs in the fucking real world. But I'm pretty sure you didn't guess that because, like me, you're probably a douchebag full of dick tip dumpster fire. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how that works out. Anyway, that being said, to Tiger Lily and her hot Filipino group, I apologize for this video. To the asshat in that same group who says that I'm a joke and that I'm scared to live in the real world, I have no fucks to give to you. And I do not apologize because you put me here because my martial arts is a joke. So I left the group because of you. I became a coward because of you. But in finding my cowardness, I found my bravery. And I always remember the one thing. The cowardly lion needed a heart. But something one of my stepfathers told me, or my surrogate father rather, who passed in 2011. A coward is the most dangerous man on the planet because you don't know what they're going to do to stay alive. Well, I'm not a coward because um, I did sign up for selective service. I did serve about five or six months in the Army National Guard before my leg got fucked up. And Vogue Voc Rehab was supposed to pay for my college. I spent a war with Vogue Voc Rehab. You know when they started helping me for college? They haven't. Alright? So... Let's, let's, let's clarify that. I have a guy that I am with now from Vogue Rehab who wants to help me get a job in the real world. Hello, Mr. Deans. But as far as when this started in 2010-11, when I got out of the military because my leg got fucked up and my dumb ass didn't know how fucked up I was because I had integrity and I decided to just go home where if I would have known my leg was severely fucked up, I would have took a medical discharge, but I didn't do that because I listened to the doctors and I'm stupid. Okay, so I didn't get a medical discharge because I'm fucking stupid. I didn't know my hip was fucked up. I just thought it was my knee. You know, if you have a good knee, you're, you can you can still do kung fu. And then three years in, we find out, oh, dude, there's something wrong with your fucking hip. And I'm like, what the fuck you mean there's something wrong with my hip? The army said it was my knee. But, you know... So, Mr. Ortiz, the god of soldiers, got me into the Vogue Rehab program. I had to go back and forth to Richmond for like five to six months. And each time I went, I had to take these damn tests. I took the tests. These motherfuckers were supposed to help me. They didn't. They just started helping me last year. But they didn't pay for school. They didn't pay for my books because the Pell Grant had already paid for the shit. And they were supposed to do it from way back in 2011 or 12. But no, they kept putting me through the fucking ringer. So I don't want to hear anything from you about who's paying for my motherfucking damn college tuition and shit. Because college is almost over. Now, back to the fact that the matter of hand, you know, you are, you're younger than me. Go serve in the military. See how well you get when you get out and you only get 300 bucks a month because even though you got an honorable discharge, you didn't get to complete your full service contract. Now, I got fucked up in the military. I didn't choose to get fucked up. I wanted to stay in the military until I came home in a body bag. Not too many of us will say that out loud because that will probably get us hooked back up into the psycho ward. But anyway, I did have a psychiatrist. We do have a plan. I did suffer from depression. So, I've been through some shit. But to you, my kung fu is a joke. And now you're getting closer to knowing why my kung fu is a joke. So then, after the whole Vogue Rehab not helping me shit, and the Pell Grants, because I had to talk to my advisor before she lost her job, um, yeah, she's like, yeah, you just keep applying for them Vogue Rehabs just in case the, um, not the Vogue Rehabs, for the Pell Grants just in case the military doesn't come through. Because the military is kind of sticky about certain things. And FYI, before, like, three years ago, National Guard couldn't even use the GI Bill. 
All right. Now count that back. But four or three years ago, because I'm a nasty girl, National Guard, we were not ever offered the GI Bill. We can get any benefits that the regular Army members got. None of that shit. The reserves, who are basically the same thing as National Guard, because there's three armies. I'm pretty sure you're not smart enough to know this, but there's three armies. Because you have the real army, you have the reserves, and then you have the National Guard. All right? Now, granted, the National Guard is controlled by two bases. We are controlled by the actual army, and we are controlled by the state in which we are in. All right? I went into the military at 37 fucking years old because I had two options. Become a soldier or become a criminal. I didn't want to become a criminal because I like my freedom and prison is not the place for a tiny guy like me. But I didn't think that the military was either until I got there. And then I found people that is my height and shorter and they fucking kicking everybody ass. I felt right at home. I found my motherfucking home. I had some friends in Bravo Company. I found my home in Delta Company. Yes, I had some issues while I was there, which is why I wound up in three different companies. Because the first company, I got fucked up. My leg got fucked up. Then I fell in the hole. And so I missed some training. So they decided they were going to send me to golf. So when they sent me to golf, I got bullied by some fucking officers overusing their power. And then I told them, y'all just going to go ahead and kick me out of the army. Because if I go back to golf, I'm going to prison. Because I'm going to murder that gigantic ass Chinese drill sergeant, drill sergeant Walsh. And that white drill sergeant that was as short as me because they were making a mockery out of me. And I just couldn't take that shit. So then, after refusing training for the fourth time, they decided, all right, we got you. We're going to kick your ass out this motherfucker. You dishonorable discharge. At that time, I didn't give a fuck. But I also didn't know how fucked up my leg was. So then, after that, they sent me to Delta Company. And Delta Company, I never had a motherfucking problem. Not one goddamn problem. Not one goddamn day. I have a problem with anybody. I had an issue, but not a problem. Me and the Aztec warrior Drill Sergeant Amisqua didn't get along. Me and um, Drill Sergeant Armber, we had some good laughs. The only time that we didn't have a laugh was like my first day in navigation training where he took my canteens and threw them in two different directions. Thank you, Drill Sergeant Armber. Now, let me explain that before anybody go get mad at Drill Sergeant Armber. No. Delta Company... Did shit different than Bravo Company. Bravo Company, as long as we had water in our canteens and our camel packs, they didn't give a shit. Delta Company, way smarter. They tied their fucking canteens to their fucking mix. I did not know that. Nobody debriefed me on that. So when we were at Navy and Drill Sergeant Armbrust said, Okay, everybody, present canteens, drop canteens. I hadn't been there but two days. Ain't nobody debriefed me on shit. When Drill Sergeant Haynes took me from um, Bravo to Delta, he didn't brief me. So I didn't fucking know because Bravo and Delta did their shit differently. But I learned real fast I fucked up twice. I only fucked up twice and I didn't have to have a sock party. I fucked up the first time was the canteens. The second time we had to do police calls. And I had been in the army just a little longer than these guys. So I'm singing cadences. I pissed off Drill Sergeant Jones or Drill Sergeant Jackson, whatever his name is, a black dude. So he decided, okay, motherfucker, so you want to sing cadences. I didn't give you permission to sing cadences. Everybody pick up a fucking rock and go back and forth six times. So after we did that, I apologized to everybody in my um, my platoon because it wasn't the whole company. It was just my platoon. It was um, second platoon, Duff Dilders. We, um, we had to um, do that shit. In fourth platoon over in Bravo, I was an outlaw. I was also known as Father Time in... Um, I was a uh, 433 Father Time. And in Delta, I was second platoon old dick. And we were deaf dealers. So, since my kung fu is a joke, I understand I've been through some shit. I've been through a lot of shit. So my kung fu can continue to be a joke because guess what? That's your opinion and I don't give a fuck. Anyway, as we moved on, because while we're on the subject of military things, I could not get... The GI Bill. Because I was Army National Guard. Not regular Army and not Reserves. Because only regular Army and Reserves got the GI Bill up until three years ago. So, Pell Grants. Government Pell Grants. That you do not have to pay back. My first advisor, 
helped me get all of those. And they kept helping me get those. So guess what, motherfucker? My parents didn't pay for it. I'm sure your parents can pay for college because of our skin tone difference. And yeah, I know there's poor white people, but they're not as poor as me. And then again, there may be some as poor as me. But I don't know and I don't give a fuck. I hope they have a good journey. But I will tell you this. Since, you know, you made me become a coward last night. You made me, like, leave the group and all this other bullshit. Um, and you're watching. And my kung fu is a joke. Or as you said, my martial arts is a joke. Um, understand. Any person that's brave enough to sign their life up for this government and go live and go die for this motherfuckers are braver than anybody you will ever fucking meet. Alright? And one thing about us soldiers, we kind of look out for each other. Yeah, we fight, we argue, we bicker, we're children. Of, we're children all of the same parent. You do not call a Marine a soldier. You do not call a soldier a Marine. I'm never going to be a Marine. A motherfucking army. Period. Now, I've had some arguments with some Marines. You know? Had to point some shit out. Like, yo, you know, honestly, we're all on the same team. If someone that's a civilian call you a soldier, they can't identify you a Marine when you're not in your Marine uniform. And technically, all the uniforms are the same color and look exactly the same, except for the Navy, because the Navy is royal or royal blue. But as far as the Army and the Air Force and the Navy is, the Marines are still green. And as long as we're all green, we're all on the same team. Navy is blue. But they're still in the Army. Well, they're still in the military. So, understand something. When you are poor and you get a ride to college to educate yourself so that you can get a real job in the real world where you don't have to worry about your bills or moving money to make sure you have bills covered, until you're in those shoes, you should probably shut the fuck up. No, I'm poor, dude. Been poor all my motherfucking life. I am the second of seven children. The only reason why I don't have a good job in the real world is because of my female siblings that had babies by people probably just like you. You know, I'm going to fuck this bitch, I'm going to get her pregnant, and then I'm going to bail. So, I don't know if you have children. But let's, 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 let's go there. You know, I wouldn't be where I am right now if my siblings would have, like, used their brains instead of gapping their legs. Maybe if they would have used these things in this bag called a condom... Instead of having unprotected sex with motherfuckers that tell you, oh, I love you, let's let's just do it without it because it's going to feel so much better for me versus, oh, there's a slight chance that I can get you pregnant and then I'm not going to be here for you when I'm done. But I'm sure since you've been watching my videos, you probably know all of my stories. But my martial arts is a joke. I just wanted to put all that shit out there because this is where you dropped the 99.9. .9. You don't have to like me. You don't have to be here. You can troll me all you want because even bad, um, bad comments and shit helps boost me. Just like it does in TikTok. Just like it does in Instagram. And I have those, by the way. If you want to go there and, um, you know, start bad mouthing me and my kung fu and shit there, please do. Because, see, when people see that shit and they'll either agree with you or they won't, it'll get me more followers. If you get me more followers, you will be responsible for accelerating my career. And the only thing left that I can say to you before I end this video is thank you. I'm Echo Fan Grey Wolf. Be seeing you.